Wow, it feels nice to be filming a self-care Sunday video after a while. Um, my God, lighting up a candle, setting the mood. This literally is a sample candle from when I was working on the verified scent that we did for Diwali only for gifting purposes. But it feels really special to be able to um, have worked on a product like this. Even though it's not for sale, I really like went through so many different renditions of the fragrance and so many different types of fragrances. Like the one I have here is a sandalwood with a few different things um, mixed in it. I don't want to get into the details because what if we decide to do this as a product someday? One of the main DMs I get is about that. Okay, I should do hellos. Hi, WFM! Welcome to today's video. If you are relatively new to my channel, you may not know what Self Care Sunday is, but there's a playlist out there and a channel search which you can do it. Take a look at and understand what the series is about. For those of you who are new, let me quickly give you a 10 second pitch on what this is. This is me literally just sitting down and having conversations about life, about things, about things that matter while I do typically tend to do my makeup or skincare or hair or something or the other. Uh, that is not the main thing about the takeaway from these videos. I would like for you to um, be part of conversations with me. I will as we go along and as I'm getting ready, today I'm getting ready with a specific purpose in mind, I'll come to that in a bit. Um, I'll, I will of course tag all the products, mention them, link them, that sort of stuff down below. I will probably touch base on what I'm using and why I'm using it a little bit because the makeup lover in me needs to mention those things sometimes. But the idea of Self Care Sunday is to just focus on you. And because I'm doing these after a while, I took a break for quite a while, um, I decided to do a call out for questions on just general life conversations both on Instagram as well as here on YouTube surprisingly actually not that surprisingly I got a much bigger response on Instagram than I did on YouTube so you'll see me diving into some of these questions I haven't really gone scrolling into the um, response of that little thing that you get to put on Instagram stories because I wanted it to be as organic and I didn't want to think of responses from before that's my go-to style so while I do my makeup, the goal of which today is to do makeup with a very specific luminous skin brief that I have because there is a magazine that is featuring me and they've asked me to do a look like this. And if you watch my vlogs regularly, you will see that in one of my upcoming vlogs whenever it goes live, I guess. Um, but I don't want to get into that right now. But while I'm working on that look today, I thought we'd chat. I thought we'd catch up. I thought that it would be nice to do a self-care Sunday if you do this part of my vlogmas series and if you guys continue to give this love, I will do more of it. With that, let's dive right into it. Okay, so as I start prepping my face, I'm going to dive into the first thing that I see over here from Sabhana. Difference between being spiritual and being religious in a simplified way. Okay, wow, we're just diving in with the big guns, huh? Um, look, I think that in general, spirituality and religion as topics, maybe even politics, but I do talk about politics a little bit here and there, especially on my Instagram stories. Um, these are all topics that I think I shouldn't talk about. Just from a very right point of view, just because you will end up pissing off somebody off and you're pleasing a section of the audience and pissing off the rest of them. Uh, doesn't matter what the ratio is, the person who's talking about it will never come out winning. <laughs> so um, I have mixed feelings about getting into this. But if I just kind of from an objective point of view have to give you what I feel is the... Uh, why is this feeling so like grainy on my skin? It's an eye cream. I would like to apply my eye creams all over my face. That's not new information. And it's also like, has it expired? Because I can feel it filling on the skin. Ew, wait, I need to switch this product. Not starting off on the best note. The way I see it, objectively speaking, the main difference between religion and spirituality is religion is what we talk about traditionally speaking, a little bit more by the book, so to speak. Um, whereas I think spirituality is more to do with looking inwards, not necessarily from a God perspective, but more from a karmic point of view, if that makes any sense. Like, I consider myself to be a medium level religious person, but I consider myself to be quite a spiritual person, like on the scale of it. I'm trying to open this box one second, this is annoying me. So the way I truly see it is that spirituality has more to do with being accountable inward 
than anything else in a nutshell if i have to say it then that's the way i perceive it i feel like a lot of people have different definitions of this nothing is right nothing is wrong um it's okay for everybody to pick what works for them i feel like as a society we love to get up in other people's business about how their religion works or doesn't work for them or how something they're doing is not like this and something they're saying doesn't match like just let people live it live you know what live and let live essentially i feel like that's where my head is at and i feel like the same things don't work for everyone so you have to be open minded enough to say that it doesn't affect me i don't need to have an opinion on everything that's something that i'm still learning by the way because i tend to have opinions um and over the years my opinions have definitely reduced on things in general but yeah if i'm being plain straight up honest about it um i also i mean i'm also working on this on myself and that's just the basic difference i see between spirituality and religion i should move on to whatever might be next so prajakta talks about growing glowing grooming and your self care i feel like i talk about this a lot in the vlogs no and then she also asked me about broken strong friendships oh shit how much time do we have um listen i could write a book about <laughs> unfortunately about just friendships in general if i'm being honest um i've had the good fortune of having some fantastic friendships um and i've also had some broken friendships some which i'm glad are broken some which are wounded but still in place somehow um <laughs> and some which are you know unfortunately just not part of my life as much as i would have wanted them to be at one point of time in my personal journey i've come to realize that i will not cry through this video and this topic about friendships always makes me really emotional but i can't afford to cry through today's video because i'm doing glam for the feature like i mentioned um the thing about friendships with me is that i've always uh craved strong friendships when i was and i'm going to give you back story on this which i don't know if i've ever shared with you i must have i'm sure at some point somewhere or the other when i was really young like i mean like 7 years old my absolute best friend my parents got divorced and she moved cities and then countries and i at that point of time this is pre social media pre everything obviously we lost touch we didn't talk for years um i didn't have an address to write her letters at in particular and she uh, moved out of the country when i was in the third grade sometime around my 6th or 7th standard i can't quite remember i remember writing emails cuz emails were new and the happening thing at that point of time i sound really old i'm aware of it i'm 31 years today in case that gives you some perspective um somewhere along the line i when emails came you know into being and into access and that kind of thing I remember randomly writing one long email about I hope it's you and write me back and I put like 15 20 email combinations of her first name last name first name dot last name first letter last name name first letter of last name and I sent this to like I remember it was Google like Gmail Hotmail Yahoo and I put all these combinations per combination Gmail Hotmail Yahoo because I was just really trying to track her down and i still remember the way i screamed and squealed when a week later she replied to me from one of those email ids and um we've kept in touch ever since when i was in the us i went and met her she stayed over with me one night she's the friend who uh, eventually moved to hong kong i visited her in hong kong she's come to bombay a bunch of times i've been to hong kong a bunch of times to meet her uh you know i know her hong kong friend circle so well and now when her hong kong friend circle visits bombay i hang out with them so often i feel like that one thing has led to so many social situations for me in a most beautiful way however because i was very very young when we got you know bichhad gaye type and i even remember at ymca camp one year in the middle when i didn't know where she was we were told to write letters to god and i didn't know that ymca was going to compile all of these letters and read some of them aloud on parents day at the last day of camp so i remember my mum's reaction very specifically when they read one line from one of the letters um which said bring my best friend back into my life and my mum looked at me instantly because she knew that that was part of my letter 
So yeah, uh, broken friendships. The reason I'm going back to this, <laughs> giving you this long Ram Katha, is that because of the experience of having lost uh, my best friend, even though it was temporary in the long run, as a young child, friendships have always held a very, 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 very special place in my heart. And one of the things I land up getting less than I want to get back, which leads to me trying not to have expectations, but having expectations because I'm human, but also leads to me feeling left down quite often in those friendships because I give way too much than I should and I put unnecessary pressure on others. And that's on me. That's something I'm working on. That's something I figured out in therapy um, that I give in these friendships way more than I should because I'm putting unnecessary weight on someone else with my expectations because these actions are my choices. But by nature, I'm also someone who can't tell myself, a channel stop giving because you've given enough. Like, I don't know how to do that. Because when I'm in, I'm in. And that has to do with absolutely any personal relationship I have. You know, like once the guard is down and you're in my special circle. Um, oh shit, one second. So that's the thing. Once you're in, you're in. Like once you're in that special circle on that close friends list, almost as if, uh, just to translate it to social media talk, then you're in. And then I don't know how to stop giving. And that's just a me thing. That's genuinely a me thing. So I want to put that out there. Um, clearly, I've gone into a uh, longer personal story version of broken, strong friendships. They are part of life and I have experienced it in various shapes and forms. But I think that if they really are strong uh, and if your friends really truly have the perspective to understand where you're coming from and you have perspective to see where they're coming from. I think being able to see that both ways is really important because there have been times when I've said, hey, I have perspective for why he said so and so and so or she did so and so and so. But why doesn't she have perspective on why, like my point of view. So I think two-way perspective is like super important. You can't have one person who's just always there and the other who's not. So think about it. If you've done something or if you put weight on someone else and they've not signed up for that weight, then they're not entirely wrong to be mad at you. Um, and having said that, if you have constantly been there for someone and they're just taking you for a joyride, then maybe it's a good thing that friendship is broken or wounded or whatever because it's not needed, you know then? Because I strongly believe in people will fight for you if they really want you in their life. And I mean that in all ways. I am thinking of a specific friend when I say this um, who, you know, was in uncomfortable positions a few years ago where people were talking about me and not nice things and they were present in the room when that happened and they never told me until months later by then I had already known and I like I already knew everything I didn't say that oh like you know go to hell da 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 I said I appreciate you finally coming in you know kind of saying this to me kind of thing and they were like no but now we've learned better and da 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 and then what happened <laughs> Uh, six months later, they were back there and this time I was like, I'm done. I really am done. I, I Unfortunately, I'm not in touch with this person that I'm thinking of at the moment because it, I can't just be around when you want me around and in the capacity you want me around. Like sometimes you have to be able to think and say that you care. I believe that you care, but you don't care enough and that is not making the cut anymore. At one point of time, it made the cut because I said, it's okay. They're like that. They're like that. But after a point of time, it's just not enough. After a point of time, you want someone to at least put you on a similar level than you put them. And I take it very seriously when somebody says you're family. Like if I call someone family, I truly mean it or I don't say it. Um, so just again, going back to this, I enjoy people that will fight for me if they have to. When I fought for my friendships, when I had to, and some have lasted and some have not. Um, moving on, but I want to talk about my makeup really quickly in the second opening out a new concealer. Uh, what I have over here is the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Concealer. I want to get the name right. Liquid Touch Concealer in the shade 330N. Again, we'll link, link tag, those kind of things down below. This is a new one. Haven't tried it before. Bought it when I was in Saudi. And I'm just realizing that I forgot my beauty blender. So give me a second, please. 
This next question is a makeup one, but I absolutely have to answer it. What lip oil do you use? It looks so amazing. Uh, I have been teasing this lip oil for a bit. You've been seeing me use it for a while. It has launched. It is the Verified Lip Love Lip Oil. It is absolutely fantastic. It may look a little bit pink in my hand, but it's completely transparent, leaning very little pink. Uh, the way it wears on the lips. It is super, super nourishing. Hope you've seen the launch video because all the details are on that. I will leave a link in and um, you can get your hands on it. I like this one. How do you stop letting words affect you? Sasha is asking me that. I hope I'm pronouncing your username correctly. I don't think words can ever fully stop affecting me. I mean, since you're asking how it st stops affecting me, I think to some level they do, but it depends on how deep you let them in, if that makes sense. To say that they don't affect me at all would be a lie, um, but the filters for me are who is saying them, what is the intention behind them, again very very important to me because I feel like if you're someone whose opinion I value, your words will 100% affect me, like if my parents or my husband or my best friend is saying something about me. Um, then 100% I will take it into consideration in all shapes and forms uh, but if it's coming from a random person on the internet I will see what their objective is are they trying to hurt me um, are they saying it is constructive criticism uh, in a general person non-internet person context also I would just kind of say look at the intention always look at the intention what's your filter everyone's words can't affect you with the same gravitas no so, what is your filter? What, how much should someone be given power? Like, how much power should someone be given? Um, so, obviously, not everyone in your life in general holds an equal amount of power. Again, I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago from when I'm filming today, I, you would be seeing this video a little bit later, um, I kind of got into a little bit of a squabble with a friend of mine and they insinuated that I said something or did something and I hadn't so I clarified from my point of view saying hey no this is actually what happened and they went on to repeat it in a given context and that then offended me because I said but I'm clarifying what I meant and I'm clarifying what I did and I was kind of looking out for you so and so so their words would affect me because there's someone I hold close to me um, and my words would vis-a-vis -vis affect them as well because we're close friends by the end of the conversation we had both come to realize we both had good intentions and realized that okay we, it was just a miscommunication but I think that if someone's word, words affect you what's very important is what is your response are you you know they say fight or flight but like I'm someone who will stay and fight and talk and be like no but let's work through that awkward conversation I would much rather have that awkward conversation uh, because I care for you it goes back to like just fight for the people even like and fight for the people doesn't mean you have to be like going to war for like oh my god they did this no sometimes fighting for the people comes in small gestures like if my friend reached out to me and said hey Anna you said this and I interpreted it this way me reaching back out and responding immediately and saying no actually this is what I meant and staying on that conversation for an hour in the middle of the night even though I have a migraine um, is me fighting for that person because I care and I want to clarify right um, and it goes both ways. I feel like when you really want to get through that awkward conversation and keep someone in your life is beautiful because disagreements and miscommunication is inevitable I guess depending on context and how close you are to someone and that kind of thing. But if you stick around for those awkward conversations and you work through them, your relationships only become stronger and better. That's the way I see it. And in fact, in my experience, uh, any kind of relationships, romantic, sibling, friend, close friend, one of the worst things that you can do with someone is let's sit and talk and then that talk never happens because like someone is, you know, uh, awkward to have confrontations or is the most non-confrontational person ever it doesn't have to be a fight or an argument it never has to be that sometimes all you need to do is let's just sit down one-on-one -on -one and let's bear our hearts out just let's just completely talk our hearts out and say this is what I felt like in the moment and when you have those kind of conversations you really need to be honest in your heart 
with intention, with where you were coming from, why you felt a certain way. Sometimes I also feel like people feel weird to voice thoughts because the filter goes on in the head that this sounds so petty. It's okay. If that was a sentiment you had and if you were petty in a moment, it's better to acknowledge it and say it because it's part of life. It's an emotion you had. Uh, are there times we can all be petty? Hell yeah. I'm not going to deny that there are times in my life that I now look back at and I'm like, you know what, I should have let it go. It was quite petty. But at that moment in my life, that petty action or that petty thought or that petty response or that petty anything, it was my feeling. You can't cancel someone's feeling. You can't invalidate what someone is going through. That's not right. That's not a thing. So to me, that's really important. Like I find it very important to acknowledge all feelings. Like I'm the kind of person if you're having an awkward conversation with, I'll just say, oh my God, this is so awkward. <laughs> and I'll break the ice and laugh a little. I am that person. i ask any of my close friends that. Like I am that person who will say, um, you know, hey Anam, you did so and so, it seemed rude. I am that person who will say, hey, can you not call me rude because that's offensive. And I'm, I know I'm not a rude person. Can you instead just say that you were really off that night? Just because that one change of word, if it's a little bit of a trigger to me and you accepting that, yeah, maybe she just was off that night. And I acknowledge in these situations that I was off, but I can't always be on. Uh, nobody can always be on. And if I was rude, then, then I was rude, period. I'm not saying that one should just go with what I want to be called. But when I'm admitting and saying that, hey, you know what, that wasn't so, this is where I was coming from. And if somebody keeps repeating the same word, then you're digging the trigger deeper and deeper into the other person and then that's off-putting. So I feel being respectful of people's um, triggers in whatever sense. Uh, I know trigger is a word that gets used very, very loosely, but I think there are different words and different phrases and different things that to put people off. And I know what mine are, like I know what my migraine triggers are. So I know what completely gets me off and I'm like, no, 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 but I'm not that person. This is what actually happened, so let me clarify and give you context. You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's very important to vocalize any thought and any sentiment and don't keep filters um, where you feel somebody else will invalidate your emotions. If somebody else is invalidating your emotions, then that's on them, that's not on you. You get what I'm saying? Where did this question start off from and where have we landed up from? This is how self-care Sundays are, I guess. I guess we're going to like 20 different directions. Monica is just saying, I can't begin to express how happy I am reading this. So excited and looking forward. I really need to do more of these, no? Kritika asks, putting oneself first, be it among friends, family or work. You know, I think in general as women, we carry a lot of guilt around putting yourself first. I think some amount of this and a big amount of this has to do with just social conditioning on what we think is considered okay. Like growing up, I saw my mom always, always, always putting us, my brother and I, first. Putting my dad first. She, I don't think she ever put herself first, even till today. And I kind of have to remind her of that. Mom, do this for you. And that's, I don't think that's just a mom thing. I think that's a general female thing, which goes even deeper if you're a South Asian female. I don't think it's a bad thing to put yourself first. I think it's great if you're able to do that in a healthy way. I'm obviously at no point of time and because things can be taken so out of context on the internet, I'm going to clarify and say I obviously don't mean you should be selfish. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting yourself first. I think it's so important to not feel guilty about it. Um, I think it's so important to realize that an empty cup cannot fill somebody else's cup. Um, Two years ago, I think it was when um, I was in a really, really, really low phase and I was having one of those times in my life where I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm so upset. I was just, it was a mix of a lot of different emotions. And I have this friend in my life who's much, much, much older than me, um, who gave me this cup example of how you can't pour from an empty cup. And I think that I've uh, heard it many times since that, but when he said this to me, it was the first time I ever heard it. 
and we're about 18 years apart. <laughs> so he comes from a lot of wisdom and life experience and I really did take that, um, take note of that. So I feel like that has stuck with me. There are times when I feel guilty about things because social conditioning and I'm unlearning with each day, right? We're all learning, unlearning every single day. I go back and his voice rings in my ear where he says to me, you can't pour from an empty cup, Panam. And I'm like, that's so true. That is absolutely, absolutely so true. You cannot pour from an empty cup and I need to not feel guilty because if I'm draining myself, I'm not going to have anything for me. I need to reset. I need to go back. I need to reprogram my mental state and then come back when I'm, when I'm ready for me, vis-a-vis -vis ready for anyone else. You know what I mean? That's just, it's part of life. It's part of things running their own course, if that makes any sense. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Is it common to feel mentally isolated when you break social norms? Oh my god, um, yeah, I mean in a nutshell, yeah, I don't know how to dive into this, so I don't know how not to dive into this even because my head's already going into 20 different directions, um, but 100%, I feel like, I feel like the minute you're doing something that society isn't conditioned to accept, it could be absolutely anything, smallest of things and examples that are popping in your head right now, um, you will feel a little bit alone. I remember there was a friend of mine, I don't, obviously I'm not naming anybody through the course of this video as you might notice. There was this very particular friend of mine and I'll never forget her reaction when I told her I was marrying Gerard or that I was, I think I told her I was with Jerry um, and she hadn't even met him. So I was just describing him and she thought I had gone crazy and she's someone I've known all my life. And it was such a heartbreaking moment for me. I remember driving back home from her house that night and feeling like, oh my God, here's a friend I've supported through so much who, because somebody on paper is so, on paper means, when I say on paper, I mean, typically you wouldn't expect the conventional, uh, you know, I was 23, he was 34, different religions, different backgrounds, different uh, family backgrounds, different cities, ethnicities. Um, there's a lot that we have on paper that doesn't seem like oh really but we work in real life we work we work as we work um, and just off the bat she was like mm, 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 mm. she went off and said 20 things to me that I would personally just not forget I've forgiven her for them not that she's apologized but in my head I've forgiven her for them okay but here I am Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Happily married six years later, they, all my friends and her even have come to seeing us really love each other, grow together, build a life together, build our family, you know, together, bringing our families together even. Um, but I feel that instant reaction of things is something that I won't forget. So at that point of time, I remember I felt so bad because this was someone I obviously considered very very close to me um, you know this is someone I would normally say is part of my inner circle as you call it. Um, and I mean she's still we're still friends uh, over the years because of completely unrelated things now that I'm thinking about it and I'm realizing we're not as close as we used to be but I think that as you grow older you're not as close to a lot of people just out of time being the biggest villain to be honest <laughs> because everyone's so busy in their own lives. So for completely unrelated circumstances, we're close, but we're not that close anymore. But I felt very isolated at that time from her and from a very specific set of people that resonated with her thoughts. And I remember being like, okay, but I'm gonna follow my gut into things that I think are right for me and good for me. Yeah, is it okay to feel isolated? I hope I've answered your question. Yeah, I mean, Unfortunately, isolation comes with standing your ground when society isn't necessarily ready for that. You know what I mean? I like this question. Punchly, Pancha, I'm looking at the username so I don't know how to read it aloud. Suggestions on maintaining personal boundaries with colleagues and still being friendly. I think I like this question because it's very interesting to look at this from a colleague's point of view. For me, colleagues are essentially my team. 
I have to be very transparent that there's always as friendly as I am with my team there's always a little power dynamic that I can't not acknowledge because I am technically their boss even though I don't think of it that way um, they may think of it that way sometimes so I just want to acknowledge my position on that off the bat for sure looking for a product one second I think it's important to maintain personal boundaries in general you know? like not I mean with colleagues yeah sure for sure but just in general I think personal boundaries is something that people find it so difficult to even express forget maintain like even in personal settings like for someone to say hey I don't like to be called that or hey can you please not say that call me that instead or say this instead because that word is a little bit of a trigger for me for various circumstances these are all boundaries you are essentially establishing and setting boundaries and saying this is who I am and this is what I like and I don't want to be labeled as something that I can't relate with I think it's important to I mean stay friendly I'm not really going to dive into that because that's up to you on how friendly you want to be and how much you want to let people in in a colleague you know kind of setting that's your call but I do think that you can stay friendly while maintaining personal boundaries. The reason I say that is because even in fact in a, in a professional setting it might be a little bit easier than in a personal setting. In a personal setting there may be times when your friends just don't leave the house and it's 11.30 and 1 o'clock in the night and you really want to sleep and you know like you're like mm, now what do I do? How do I get out of this situation? I would say hey you know what I'm done for the night. Like I, I would be honest. I am straightforward to the point of fault. <laughs> I will be very honest. Um, people either really love that about me or they don't like that about me. So I, I feel like, and you also have to deliver it nice. They wouldn't say it the way I just said it. I would be a lot more chill and like, you know, like I'd have to say it a lot more politely. Um, but I do think that in a professional setting, because it is a professional setting, establishing your boundaries is a lot easier than personal but that's subjective huh? I'm saying comparatively uh, if you're someone who finds it difficult to say no then you're gonna find it difficult in both settings like I was having this conversation with a couple of friends about a month month and a half ago they were home for lunch and one of them reminded me of an incident years ago at, a, at an event thing and uh, they said I love the way you said but mujhe ye karna hai. why should I change the brief to something that you know I don't some examples that I don't want to mention because then I'll be giving away who it was and I don't want to do that. Um, but I've always been that person and I think that I've been brought up to be that person. I'm going to give all the credit for this to my mom who always asked me my opinion on things and who always told me that if you don't like it, say so. You know what I mean? And then I was only encouraged to be like that at school. And I also happen to meet someone and marry someone who values my opinion a lot because again I am very opinionated and if you clearly cannot gel with that side of my personality I don't think we would have ended up getting married. Um, so I do think it's important to be able to just say it and I think a lot of people have a fear of just establishing boundaries or saying no when they actually want to say no. But ha like think of it like this. What's the worst scenario in your head? How bad can it get? Like what can you say to someone to offend them by saying no? It's again kind of goes back to that very first thing we were talking about in this video. Establishing that you got to talk through the awkward conversations when you do. It's just as simple as that. The minute you swallow that bitter pill and it's really not that bitter if I'm being honest um, of okay you need to say what you feel and if you upset someone then the learning is to say it more politely sure but say it <laughs> don't not say something don't not say no don't say yes just to please someone because what's going to end up happening is you'll please the other person that you will end up hating on whatever the situation is and nobody deserves that nobody deserves to be said you know uh, nobody deserves to be in a situation where they're uncomfortable because they said yes to something that they didn't even want to say yes to. I don't. Was that a puzzle? Like, you get what I'm saying? Was that a tongue twister? I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to say it's okay to say no. It's okay to not feel guilty. To unlearn and to say that this is my life. I am the main character of my film. 
and I will only sign up for the things that I truly want to sign up to and I will not sign up for anything else. And if you, like I said, if you just make peace with the fact that there will be some awkward conversations along the way, but after that, you'll be fine. You'll be great. I think once you, I, I read this somewhere and I can't remember where, so unfortunately I don't know whom to credit here, uh, but the line went like, you will be a villain in somebody's story somewhere out there in your life. You can't be on everybody's good side. And I remember when I read that, I was like, ah, that's so true. Even if you stand up for yourself, it's easy to become the villain, especially if you're the female. It's just so easy for people to, to use any thing to make you the villain if that's how they want if that's how they want to put whereas i think a lot of circumstances in life come from variable factors there's never just one side that's right or one side that's wrong there's always multiple perspectives so i feel like you know once you just kind of get comfortable with the idea that yaar kisi ki story mein to hame bad guy banna hi hai may as well do it while standing up for what we think is right and the minute you get comfortable with that you're in a better place. That's the way I see it. Okay, I kind of love this next question because it's very personal to like my, me and my life. Um, how do you and Jerry manage to keep this spark alive with content creation and also, and then I'm guessing the space for her got over over there. Um, oh, and also owning a brand must be so pressed of time. I love this question because again, like I said, it's something that's making me think. It's making the tick tick inside my brain i think that every now and then if anyone who's saying to you that the spark is alive in their relationship 24 7 then they're really rare and really lucky or they lie i'm sorry there's no other way for me to put it is the spark there 24 7 between jerry and me no it isn't is it always on no it isn't do we sometimes tend to have our disagreements at work that become part of our personal life yes they do is it something we're working through yeah we are um but i i think that there are moments and phases sorry not moments there are phases where in our own zones where we're entirely um consumed in work where things are not necessarily wow well, going into like details here things are not necessarily romantic all the time but we've been married for six years and I cannot expect for things to be the way they were when we were newly married. You know what I mean? And it doesn't upset me. It doesn't upset him either because we have these conversations. Like I said, once you get used to awkward conversations, you realize that they actually help you work through a lot of emotions. There are times when all we have in our minds is each other and romance and, you know, just we love each other so much. Sure. But then there are times when all we can think about is work and getting our lunch done or figuring out a disagreement that we've had. And if that means we're, you know, going through a phase where we're arguing with each other, that's fine too. It's part of the process. Um, and him and I are very like, like we're not like, come, let's fight kind of confrontational people. But we are people that will express what's on our minds. And that kind of means we're confrontational people. But I don't want it to sound like it's a fighty way because confrontational has such a negative, um, you know, connotation to it. That's not what I'm referring to. Uh, I mean to say that, we're just very straight up. We'll say what we're thinking and we'll express our emotions. And we're not people that mince our words essentially. So we're two extremely straight up people. And something like that can either really work or really not work. And Alhamdulillah, in our scenario, we make it work. Because, like I said, it's okay. we're okay with being in our own zone. There are phases where, you know, he's in a book and I'm in a different book and we're sitting into separate rooms or he's watching an action movie and I'm sitting in the bedroom and watching a rom com. and that's okay you can't always be the lovey-dovey couple of everybody's dreams that's why so many times i insist in you know we did a whole episode in fact on this uh, on being why we're not couple goals i remember we shot this a while ago i'll leave a link in on the i and down below take a look at that video please if you haven't already if you haven't seen it yet because i'm very strongly of the opinion that it just it is what it is like you we're not always we're not perfect Social media shows you glimpses of our lives and personalities and nothing on the internet that you see is fully 100% accurate and true. I say that as someone who has been doing this for 11 years now. I say that as someone who has seen things that you don't see behind the scenes. 
And I say that as someone who cares for your mental health. Don't compare your lives and your relationships with things you're seeing online. Just don't. Because it's not all factually correct. You can't, it can't be. You're watching a 10 minute, 15 minute, occasionally if I'm in a chatting mood, 30 minute vlog of a day that was 24 hours. That's 1.48 of my day. Come on. have to keep that in mind. And I'm just trying to be really real with you over here, okay? So please don't mind me bursting bubbles over here. I am literally just trying to keep it real. So the brief I had for this look was to keep my skin very luminous, very, very luminous, highlighted, that whole thing, which is essentially what I've done to a point when I'm not even doing any um, liner or anything. I just have a few last, like last finishing touches to give myself. I am doing mascara. This dark star mascara from Pat McGrath is, it is, Absolutely. If you ever feel the need to absolutely splurge on a mascara, like if you're getting married and there's one mascara where you're like, oh my god, what do I do? What do I get? I won't need falsies. Although you should get falsies and they should be verified falsies. <laughs> Sorry, shameless plug. Um, it should be. It should be this mascara. Honestly, it was so good. I cannot do a luminous looking makeup without my verified highlighters. So I'm looking at mixing Morganite with Citrine. I'm applying this pink toned highlighter right now. And in case you're wondering my hair's a mess, yeah, I'm gonna straighten it out after I finish this makeup. So when I do beauty shots for this look and I give that to you in this video towards the end, don't worry. I'm gonna do my hair. Gonna do my hair, put my makeup on, sorry, and I won't be home. And then I'm taking some citrine, which is our yellow tone highlighter, and I'm kind of mixing the two because I've got the pink blush going with the blush, but I've got a little yellow tone on the eyeshadow wash that I've given myself on the lids. And I'm not gonna give myself a matte lipstick for a change. Instead, I'm gonna make it tinty. I already have the lip oil on my lip, so I'm gonna, this is Butter Blondie. It's such a beautiful, beautiful shade for Indian skin tone. So I've kind of turned it into a soft, tinty affair on the lips. I'm gonna take a few minutes. Uh, you're gonna see this in a second, of course, and I'm gonna quickly go and do my hair and come back to you in a second. Okay, I am done with my hair, but I feel like I want to answer one last question before the, we end this video, especially because I think I answered a lot of this through the video, but I feel like I want to acknowledge it and place it here. This one is from Pradyusha, and I feel like this question in particular touches upon what I was talking about earlier, people coming and going as in when they prefer. It's a mix of a few things, right? Setting your boundaries, understanding that everyone's going to be a villain in somebody's life, being clear with your expectations and communicating them. I think one of the other things that you said that really kind of stuck with me was that you don't have negative intentions towards them, but they hurt you and they take you for granted. And take you for granted is a sentiment that I relate a lot with. And I think again, through the course of this video, you may have found the answer to that. Where people like us tend to give a lot, maybe we need to learn to give less. Having said that, it's sometimes just the opposite person where they also are takers and not givers. And we need to recognize and identify the people in our lives that are only taking from the cup and not ever pouring back. Um, it's a mishmash of a lot of answers I feel like I already gave in this video of my perspective on. But if I've offended absolutely anyone with any answers, any responses, any details in this video, I'm sorry, I feel like a video like this there may be some people who disagree. I'm happy to hear healthy arguments down below in the comments. You know, I'm always um, listening. I always believe in keeping an open mind, even if it's not a session at therapy. I feel like when you go to therapy, you go there with an open mind and it feels even more open than usual. But I always try to keep an open mind, try and understand somebody else's perspective on things. So if you have something to say in terms of something I said wrong, uh, or something that you disagree with in general or want to give me your perspective on. Nobody has to be right or wrong in particular. You can tell me down below in the comments. Um, as usual, use the hashtag webfam. You know I'm always feeling like you're having and responding to each and every one of you. I love you very, very much and I hope you're enjoying the Vlogmas series. Mwah! I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I will do more of these more often. In case I didn't answer your question, we'll do it in the next episode.